Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hey, um, I'm at Twisted Motor today um, and they have very kindly let me take this Royal Enfield Scram 411 for a test ride. Um, and it's a beautiful bike. I really like that colorway. I'll have to find out what it is. Um, it's 411cc obviously, 23 horsepower, uh, 32 newton meters of torque, uh, smaller front wheel, but all that you'll know um, it's a little bit lower by about five mil i believe but i'll verify that i'll put it up on the screen i left all my notes at home um, but uh, that's my himalayan which i just rode in and yeah so let's take this thing for a spin and see how it goes all right let's get on to this scram 411 i'm really excited about this surprising it is a little bit taller than my Himalayan I mean it's only that's whisker but you have that thing, yeah, thing to remember is the uh, seat height is measured from the bottom of the seat and I think the seat's a little bit firmer comfortable though. Okay, the gauge you got a mixture of digital and analog. Uh, K's on the outside, then miles per hour. And you know, the fact you've got a gear indicator, you got time and trip. That was quite some well, it sounds a little bit different. Okay, just heading away from uh, Tusumoto. Uh, today we're going to be heading out towards uh, Geelong Grammar uh, and out in some of the country roads out that way. Now um, at this point in the ride I noticed that the uh, setting position is uh, quite a bit more upright than the Himalayan. I believe that's due to the different seat and uh, different handlebars. So yeah I just about to pull out onto Latrobe Terrace here. Now, um, you'll see on the screen there, uh, Twisted Motors phone number, if you're in Victoria and want one of these things, um, yeah, by all means, um, give them a call, they're a great bunch of guys, and they'll be more than happy to help. So, I'll put the number up on the screen, so it's a little bit uh, easy to see, but yeah, the bike is pretty good, um, I absolutely love the look of it, I love this colourway which is the white flame and looks fantastic. Stick with me through the ride and I'll give you my final thoughts on it at the end. Yep, from here uh, through to where we turn off at North Shore, the um, speed limit is 70 kilometers an hour. Um, there's a few cars around and they're probably not gonna go that fast. Okay, even just pulling away here and going around those couple of corners, uh, notice that the Scram is handles noticeably different from the Himalayan. Now one of the things with the Scram uh, from when it was released uh, it has a different engine map to my Euro 5 Himalayan uh, but I believe that all Himalayans and Scrams now share the same uh, engine map and both of course are Euro 5. Um, so yeah, I, I did notice that the uh, suspension is a little bit stiffer than my Himalayan. Um, I don't know if they're using different forks at the front. The, the back's definitely the same. Um, or that mine has just embedded a little bit longer. Uh, so it, my suspension may have softened up a little bit. But um, yeah, even just going along here, the, the bike handles nice. It's um, quite good in the traffic and it's, it's designed as a commuter that you can take on some weekend adventures on dirt roads and things like that. Um, hopefully someday uh, I'll be able to compare the Himalayan and a Scram side by side and do some off-roading but uh, that's not today. I'm just going to turn off here and go past the new Spirit of Tassie um, uh, terminal um, which is going to leave here from October, I believe. So just going under the bridge. Um, the speed will 
rock down to 40 k's just up here um, and this road is actually bumpier than it looks this is uh, actually not a bad way if you wanted to test a motorbike in Geelong um, along here and along the waterfront it's, um, it's an interesting ride and it's pretty bumpy and things so there's nice, some nice corners and twisty bits so it's, you know, it's really cool so just on the right up here is the Spirit of Tassie or Tasmania Terminal um, which uh, is pretty cool yeah a lot of work's gone on that in the last few months it's only one of the best things to ever happen to Geelong I believe uh, down to 40 k's here um, so far the bike's been dead easy to ride um, as a beginner's bike it would be excellent um, it's an excellent commuter uh, behaves well it's unlikely to do anything un unexpected it looks great um, doesn't have a whole bucket of power but that's part of the charm of it I think so it's, um, behaves well in the corners one thing I did notice is that the bike turns in um, quite a bit quicker than the Himalayan and this road is brand new and um, super smooth well the road itself has been here for years but uh, they've just resurfaced it um, to allow for the extra traffic that's going to be coming in for the Spirit of Tassie yeah the Scram's a dead easy bike to ride slow uh, it's very maneuverable probably more than the Himalayan because uh, the Himalayan's got a 21 inch front wheel uh, this one's got a 19 uh, and yeah so it's super maneuverable uh, it's great in traffic and if you're lane splitting or whatever uh, you need to maneuver around vehicles you're, you're normally okay and in, in car parks it, it'll just be excellent so get around this roundabout over these railway lines here uh, like I think I've said already the suspension on this seems a bit stiffer um, definitely notice those bumps a bit more than a Himalayan uh, it's probably probably because it's got a bigger front wheel um, I just tried standing on it you know, to see what it's like and it's fine um, not quite as comfortable standing as a Himalayan but you got to stand you can stand um, up around here there's some uh, nice corners you know the Scram is a very predictable bike great for learners um, you'd be really unfortunate for something un untoward to happen on a corner on this thing um, the tyres that are on it are pretty good and uh, yeah so even up here there's a uh, railway line that you have to approach at an angle and it's, it's fine the tyres themselves are Seat tyres, uh, which I believe are popular in India. Um, I've got to admit, on my Himalayan, um, in the wet they're really good, in the dry they're good. Um, I've done about 4,000 k's and I have noticed that the rear tyre has started to flatten off a bit. So I might um, get the tyres changed at the next service for some um, MTAS tyres I think I'll go for. Yeah, we're about to go past uh, what was the old Shell refinery, but it's the, the Viva refinery. Um, and coming home from work, um, when I was gainfully employed before I got made redundant, I used to come home this way quite often, even in the car, uh, because it's you know, kind of a fun ride. You can't really speed along here, the cops uh, are pretty lethal, and they do sometimes hunt packs around here, so if you see one, there's probably another. And there's another example of um, sort of uneven surfaces so yeah there's a couple of really good corners around here and um, it's quite popular with the mo local motorbike riders and car enthusiasts as well uh, all around this area there's some really neat little roads around North Shore and past the refinery here and this particular corner is posted at 25 k's and we did it at about 45 the bike was absolutely fine here we're gonna hang right and I don't know if you can see it but the road is really bumpy here um, and on the interceptor and the GT you really notice those bumps but um, 
this it wasn't too bad, the Himalayan soaks up a bit, bit better with that big front wheel. Th this is a neat little road, um, I quite often come down here and I want to blow off a bit of steam or there's a picnic area at the end which we'll, sh which we'll see shortly. Now one of the interesting things along here is Geelong Grammar which is where King Charles III went to school for a short time. Um, I used to service the library equipment in there and it's a beautiful school, private school, very elite, very expensive but um, at least you get what you pay for. Yeah, like I gotta say I'm really impressed by this little bike. It's so, so well behaved, um, it's pretty great for a learner, uh, an experienced rider through a more experienced, it's just after a low power fun bike that they can take pretty much wherever they want. Uh, excellent commuter. Um, the U-turn here was dead easy. Um, I mean, it's plenty of room, but yeah, it's, um, I really like this little thing. And I think it's well worth the money. It's cheaper than the Himalayan. Um, so yeah, if you're after a great little bike to learn on or just a bike to have a bit of fun that you can take off-road occasionally, um, this could very well be the bike for you. I've got to say also that it actually looks a lot better than the Himalayan too. And without the windscreen on, you've got none of the buffeting. You do cop the wind in the chest, but you know, it, that is something that you do get used to. And on a hot day, it's uh, quite nice. And through the roundabout here, it's uh, really well behaved. And um, you know, coming up to speed again, it's 80 k's along here, and it's it does it with ease. Even from zero to 80 is fine. I, I didn't try it today on zero to 100, but um, this bike is still being run, and, and I, I, I don't want to push it. It's not my bike, so. But I did notice with my Himalayan that um, I've done about 4,000 k's on it now and the engine has freed up a lot and it'll cruise easily on 100, 110 um, and in Victoria 110 is as fast as it can go on some freeways. I think Royal Enfield hit the nail on the head with a, a scram because um, I think it's aimed at the younger riders where the Himalayans more aimed at sort of guys my age and thirties, you forties know, and that. Um, but for people just starting out, it's it's just ideal. It's well behaved in the corners, it's well behaved in traffic, it's very unlikely to do anything unpredictable on you. Uh, the rubbers that the tires that have come with it are, are nice. Um, the, the one in the back of my Himalayan that should it's done about 4,000 k's, it's starting to flatten off a bit, but um, I think it's a fairly soft compound. But here I'll, um, I'll take it down this little dirt track. Yeah, I probably should have gone in a little bit further, but um, yeah, along here there's a quite a good little dirt track. Um, it's pretty flat, it's fairly rutted. Quite a bit more mud in it than I thought it was going to, because it looked fine from the road. So I, I stayed out of the wheel ruts because I, I didn't want to have to clean the bike before I took it back. But um, yeah, it did this all well. I you know, put up with my limited skills and picking the wrong gear, and um, I didn't want to take it too fast along here because. Run into some unexpected mud. And standing up on it's fine. It's just as controllable as the Himalayan. The Himalayan rolls over the bumps a bit better with the big front wheel and the big one here. Head into and uh, yeah, back wheel spun a little bit there. Um, I was trying to stay out of that mud because, like I say, I didn't want to have to take it back and clean it. Clean it before I took oh, it back. Right. Oh, I think but it did that well, and I was really impressed with the uh, little bike. We can come past the uh, uh, cement loading uh, docks, and um, it's 
always interesting through here, there's always different ships and that, again there's some nice little curves, it's all 60k's um, and a fun little ride. Um, I, I usually do this big loop round and then get up a little short. But uh, yeah, it's, re it's, it's really interesting. This is where they load, load the cement onto the ships. Um, and supply you know, cement all over the world. Right, I'll wrap it up here. Now, would I buy one of these? Yes and no. Um, yes, if this was available uh, around Christmas time when I was looking at buying a new bike probably would have because they look great, they're fantastic, they're easy to ride, they're very predictable, they're an excellent commuter, excellent learner's bike, uh, the Beyond Learner, um, I'm still on my, on my, on my restricted license but um, I probably would have bought one, but now I've ridden Himalayan for a bit and I've got a DNA filter in it and i sort of made it my own, um, I probably wouldn't buy one of these now to swap for Himalayan because I want to get into motorcycle camping. And um, yeah, I also just want to say a quick thank you to those, to the guy, the great guys at uh, Twisted Moto here in Geelong. Um, they're fantastic. Thank you very much for lending me the bike. Um, they're always a pleasure to deal with. They're always excited about what you're into and interested in you. And they um, part of their business philosophy is to um, sort of give back to the community where they can. So they uh, occasionally have the coffee vans there. Yeah, so we'll leave it there. Um, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so you get notified of the next video. Alright, thanks a lot. Bye bye.